David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I'm extremely excited to present yet another family member, my brother, Joel Zeritsky. Joel, Hi, everybody. <laughs> he's, he's a little bit of a ham. Joel, welcome yeah. to the show. Oh, glad to be here. Now, um, I don't have to use your formal title, but you are Dr. Joel Zeritsky, correct? So they tell me. Yeah. Your, uh, dentistry? Dentistry, yes. I'm just checking. I my knew. alter ego. That's right. That's, that's actually not your maybe your first passion it's what you do for your vocation correct that is absolutely correct what talk to us about what your true passion is they know mine is bond what's yours so there, i have two passions one is magic um i would i'm a, the past national president of the society of american magicians which is right. the oldest magic society in the world wow i uh, started back in 1902 I've, probably you've heard of one of our presidents presidents called Harry Houdini. Oh, yes. So 100 years later, I got to be president. That's right. I remember so, that. Which is fantastic. And you traveled all over the place. You represented them. Yes. But it was also during lockdown. During, yes. I I'm, I go down the history books as the first virtual president oh, ever gosh. of the SAM Society of American Magicians. But I think it's fair to say one of the things that you did was you helped to bring them into the 21st century by doing this, which is creating a lot of videos. That is correct. Yeah. Yes. And they're still doing that today. Still today. Um, we have one of the largest uh, video collections of magic uh, in the world wow. uh, on, online, if you're a member. And uh, we're very proud of that. We're going to put a link below uh, because a lot of people I know that are into Bond are into other passions like magic. And they're also into Joel's second passion, which is... Batman. I'm Batman. All right. So we got we got to go back because one thing you need to know about Joel and I is we shared a room growing up. And I remember very distinctly uh, a treat to us would be every now and then our our parents would get us these Mego dolls. Yes. Um, I would get a Robin and you would get a Batman. So this passion goes way back, doesn't it? Absolutely. In fact, one of the earliest photos I've ever found of the two of us is that our parents got us a Batmobile. Yes. It's like and one of those pedal, pedal cars. Pedal cars. He's sitting in there, and I'm trying to zombie eat his brain because right. he's in the driver's seat of the, of the Batmobile that yeah. I wanted. So. Almost did it successfully, too. True. So you're a little bit more Joker back then than Batman. Yeah, but you, you've graduated through this. <laughs> exactly. But we were into that. We would um, imagine, you know, we had this house, wonderful house, but in the basement, we had this sort of like rocking spaceship. And Joel would be Batman, I'd always be Robin, and we would recreate the Adam West like cliffhangers. That's right. Like in real time. So we were we were doing cosplay before there was like cosplay. <laughs> but what happened? So talk to us about the evolution. They've all heard my story about James Bond was something that was special between dad and I, and then I kind of lost it. I went into Star Wars. And then when I was a young executive, the lifestyle of James Bond brought me back. But what brought you back to Batman? So as probably many of you have, grew up with Adam West oh, yeah. and Burt Ward and watching that campy series. Uh, of, it was fantastic coming every week and watching the cliffhangers, watching mm -hmm. Batman. Um, so I always loved that aspect of it. And it wasn't until, oh, as an adult, that I got into, you know, I was doing magic and my, my wife performs with me and we wanted to do something to help with do community events, and we we, loved, we looked for Batman costumes is what it came down to. So I turned to this gentleman. Oh, wow. Yes. Who got me in touch with a company that actually replicated the outfits. It started with the Dark Knight. Yes. Remember, remember the Christian Bale outfits? Then I went to um, the Ben Affleck one yeah. with the Batman vs. Superman. So I started to get a collection of outfits and then the collection started to build <laughs> slowly started to get pieces very similar yeah, to yeah, what yeah. you are seeing back here i know nothing about what he's talking about you can tell the dna yeah is spreading here our parents did, did a, either a really good job or a really bad job i don't, <laughs> I don't know, know what happened which one hey, and by the way these were um we'll show some images these are costumes they're more like armor from like ud replicas that are incredibly accurate and they, it is almost like wearing like the armor from the film. Yeah, they're, they're, it's made for especially 
from motorcycle riding right. to be able to take a hit, first of all, take a hit, to take a roll. So just like the movie, um, you literally can punch it and it's going to hurt your hand because it's it's fortified. So very great stuff. Unfortunately, that company is not doing it anymore. Yeah, they're doing like KISS stuff and they've gone in a different direction. Yeah, different direction. But you, you've now then taken this and now this is a part of your identity and you even combined it with some of the magic aspects. Yes. So for you... I've been a magician for, gosh, close to 25 years now, a professional magician that go out and perform. Uh, but then we started, my wife and I started to perform as Batman and Batgirl bat magic shows to incorporate both Batman and magic, which is not something that people usually correlate to. Mm. So it's, and it's been a huge success. So being able to perform for hundreds and hundreds of people and, and like I said, for community events and churches and synagogues. And and you sort of like, like my channel, The Bond Experience, has been sort of like a part of my identity. This, like, Batman magic has become part of your identity, even to the point where at some of the conventions or some of the things in Las Vegas, you dress as Batman. That's true. And one of my golden moments, as you would say, is during COVID, uh, I didn't get to travel much, but I did get to travel to David Copperfield's museum. Hi, I'm Jules Zaritsky, National President of the Society of American Magicians, and I'm here in this amazing museum with a true legend, David Copperfield. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Well, David, you were the youngest magician to join the Society of American Magicians. They used to sneak me in. Ed Michelle, the great Ed Michelle and the great Leslie Guest used to allow me to come into the SAM at the Parent Assembly, and it was an amazing time. What a great opportunity for a 12-year-old child, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, great memories, great people, and a great camaraderie. They had amazing lectures, amazing people. Uh, uh, Flip Halema doing the flip stick, uh, uh, Magic Christian doing things. And I was this little kid being, a, and Jose de la Torre, and uh, incredible, incredible artists who were creating new magic, which was really, really amazing. And now we're here 50 years later, celebrating your membership in the society. It's incredible. I don't know what happened to all those years. I know. I gotta get to work. I gotta work harder now. Well, you are the energy of the SAM well, and you. of all of magic. I think, I, think magic. You, I think you're the energy of the SAM. <laughs> this guy's got more energy than anybody. That's why they call him Batman. <laughs> well, thank you, David. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's our honor to present this to you. Thank you. Now, Batman can lift it. Yes. And I can kind of lift it. It's the Alliance of Harry Houdini Gold Tier 50 Years of Membership Award presented to David Copperfield in grateful recognition of continued and faithful service to this society. David, thank you so much for all that thank you do. Thank you so much. And it's an honor to get this in the whole Houdini area. Behind us is the water torture cell. His bathtub is over there. We've got the books from his library. Half of the books are in the Library of Congress and half are here in this museum. And to get this in this environment, means even so much more. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Which is a private museum in Las Vegas. Amazing. So, you know, we're talking, we're interviewing, we're filming just as we're filming now. Yeah. And I said something and he turns to me and he goes, and that's why you're Batman. Oh my gosh. To which I said, mm, my life is over. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a, that, That's Probably akin not. to like Daniel Craig turning to me and going, you're really like the James Bond guy. Exactly. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. So, you have to imagine, too, and again, we'll put some images up, but um, like this is my kind of walkout basement. Joel has one as well, and it has become a bat cave. Yes. I mean, toys, collectibles, models, armor, things like that, right? Yes. See, my, my goal is to be old and senile and walk <laughs> You're down. Your You're on your way. And, and walk down to my basement, to my bat cave and say, hot damn, I am Batman. And, and truly believe it. And truly believe it. And start urinating in jars and collecting your urine and growing your fingernails That's out. That's my life goal, folks. I like this. And by the way, what, you know what I'm imagining? I don't know why, but if you've seen the movie The Flash, which I actually liked, um, I imagine it's like the, the old Keaton Batman where he grew his hair long yes. and he was like climbing on the tables and stuff like that. Uh, did you like that movie, by the way? I did like aspects of it, yes. You like the Keaton parts? I like the Keaton parts, yes. Know, me too. Yes. All right, so so the, the other part of this video that I wanted to connect with, because you're, you're starting to already see the theme. There is this wonderfully unique alignment 
I believe, with James Bond and Batman. And I find that so many of the James Bond fans out there have this affinity to Batman. And, and there's some obvious ones. For example, Bruce Wayne and James Bond, um, they've both been orphaned. Mm -hmm. True. I mean, they've, they've both lost their parents violently. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, do you think there's something that we gravitate to that? I mean, we, we weren't orphaned. Yeah, it, it's it's you know it's part of the hero complex. It's part of the hero mm. story uh, that that we are drawn to. Yes, uh, uh, you know of going through all odds against all odds and still triumphing. You know, I love that. They're they're both these heroes are very triumphant. Like absolutely, good always wins over evil. Um, and I think that there's something to that because I mean you've got a very stressful job. I've got a stressful job. We don't want that reality play when we have our entertainment. Mm -hmm. We want pure escapism. You know, and I think also that the way that they look at it is that there really is no failure in life. There are points of learning. Interesting. And then you go from there and you accomplish what you need to accomplish. Oh, I like that. I really like and that. And Bond does that. Yes. Batman does that. Yeah, you're right. It's the hero complex. All right. So we've got the hero complex, and I think we both gravitate to that. We try to do that, or try to emulate that in our yeah. everyday life. Um, and then we've got maybe one of the more obvious ones, and you know, we're sitting in front of them. They both love gadgetry. Yes. I mean, the, let's face it, James Bond and Batman, they don't have superpowers. Their superpowers are the deductive reasoning. They're like detective spy, but they have these wonderful gadgets. You must be attracted to the gadgetry. Absolutely. Yeah. And and we've all been attracted to, all our lives have been attracted to gadgetry. Yeah. You know, our family was one of the first families that had the Ataris That's and right. the Intellivisions, yes. if, you, if you guys remember that. And even Betamax before that. Betamax yes. before that. So we grew up with that type of technology is good. Right. <laughs> so And and I think also what, what I've noticed over time is that Joel and I love these very... I'll call them compact things that do other things. You were one of the first people, um, even crowdsourcing, joining crowdsourcing of the watches. You yes. know, that, that would, you always wanted that. I remember even when you were young, that kind of Dick Tracy-like watch. Absolutely. I, I love that, that stuff to be able to, you know, the Dick Tracy to be able to communicate with you, which we have now. Um, but I could see that in the future of being the way of life. Yeah. And I, I tell you, the other reason I love watching the Batman films, and I almost get disappointed when I don't see it, is when Batman is in this insurmountable, impossible situation and then uses something that just happens to be on his belt. Yeah. And it's like Bond. Bond is given something by Q Branch that it just happens to work perfectly in the situation that it's in. Right. And remember, Bond and Batman are human. It's not like they yeah. have superpowers. No. They're using their intellect. Yeah. They're using what they have on them, you know, the technology, in order to accomplish what they need to accomplish. I like that. I like that. All right. Something else that I've noticed that Batman and James Bond, and I'll, I'll kind of do this akin to Batman more than Bruce Wayne, is they're both up against the most <laughs> extreme, maniacal bad guys. Like, the bad guys in each one of the films are the most extreme. Like, they're not trying to, like rob a bank. They're trying to take over the world. They're trying yes. to, you know, take over Gotham. Is that a part of the attraction? Is, is also the villains against Batman? Absolutely, because the villains themselves are highly intellectual. Yeah. So you have, you know, brains going against brains. Yeah. That it's not just brawn. Right. It's not just brawn. Yeah. It's not just superpowers. Okay, I'm the Hulk. I'm going to, you know, smash. It's not that. It's, that it's, it's a, you know... War of intellect. And I, and that's important because, again, I think I know Joel well enough I can say is that Joel and I are <laughs> mostly pacifists, I would say. Yeah. And so we're trying to use, like, how do we get through life? How do we navigate certain stressful situations by using almost like a chess move in our heads? Absolutely. Versus we're not going to use our brawn. We're not brutes. We're not going to break down the walls. That's right. And, you know, growing up, we played a lot of games. We yeah. played, I mean, not just on television and Atari and things like that, but we played chess and, uh, you know, basically, you know, checkers. Checkers, and, simple games. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. We, we were Parcheesi. So we, we used a lot of... We were the board game the board generation, exactly. is what we're saying. Yeah. So we've got to expand our mind a lot. That's true. Also, I think that there's something about, and I've noticed this, uh, 
Batman, certainly Bruce Wayne and James Bond is the style aspect. I can't ignore, I mean, we're surrounded by it right now, that Batman, whether it's his outfit itself that he wears, the very armor, he's not a schlub. Like, everything looks Absolutely. perfect. And I know you've upgraded, literally upgraded, parts of your costuming. So how important is it around sort of the Batman style and how you connect with it? Style is everything. Yeah. You know, it's a persona that you're, just like here, you have a persona that you're you're showing everyone. Yeah. And that persona is, style, whether you're Bruce Wayne, whether you're Batman, whether you're James Bond, whether, you know, you have a certain visual aspect to that. That's right. I like that. And, and, and I will say this that I've noticed. Batman, just by the very makeup of, of why he created that uniform, was to strike terror in bad guys. Correct. James Bond is to create a certain feeling when he walks in the room impeccably dressed that he is a force to be reckoned with. That's right. It's your style. Their style is a calling card of who they are and That's who right. you are. You know, very deep, very deep, very story. deep. And even in the in magic, you know, the rule of thumb for magicians is to be the best dressed person at the party if you are performing. Is that true, though? Yes. I did not. I know. Seriously, I didn't even know. That. Is that why they they do? They tend exactly. to wear to very nice. The best. Now there are some things that you wear jeans with as a magician, but right. if you're performing, let's say for a corporate oh. party or anything like that, you have to be the best dressed person in that party. Okay, I was today years old when I found this out, so I have questions. I have questions. For example, does that mean that you've got to understand who your audience is to understand what you wear? Absolutely, it is huge to it. You know, I prefer, you know, I, I do a lot cool. of children's performers, yeah. you know, performing. So yeah, you perform for your audience. So your style has to show that. Oh my gosh, I seriously did not know that. That is very, very cool. All right, we're going to play a little bit of a game, and this is this is an important one because I think every James Bond person has what I like to call their James Bond fantasy as collectors, as lovers of the franchise, and it starts out like this. But we're going to do this. We're going to change it, and we're going to theme it to Batman because you're here today. Do you have a fantasy around Batman, whether it's getting something in your collection, being in a film, doing something with an actor? What's that kind of itch that you would love to scratch from a fantasy standpoint? So I had a, a fantasy actually come true. Oh. So, and that was meeting Adam West before he passed away. Oh. Uh, and I was in full Batman gear. Oh, my gosh. To which he said to me, and who is the man behind the mask? Did he say it just like Adam West? Just like that. Oh, my gosh. So... That is amazing. So that was a great fantasy point in my life. So you you actually had a real interaction with him. I had a real interaction with him. Oh yes. my god! Tell me your pictures of that. I have pictured with Adam West. That's what yes. I'm saying. Yeah. All right, we're going to put those up here. Yeah. Trust me. That's. Did you ever meet Burt Ward? Yes, I got to meet Burt Ward. Oh my gosh! Yes, he's not the same Burt Ward as you remember back in the '60s. But well, he's no, he's and yeah, <laughs> Julie Newmar. For those oh. who remember Catwoman, Julie Newmar, who. When I met her, she's well. She was in the early '80s. She's still gorgeous. She, I mean, no an, kidding, great, absolutely and beautiful lady. It's by the way, I find that I've, we've met and we talked to on this channel so many of the Bond girls, and they're all like gorgeous, charming people. Yeah. It's like they don't age or they something. Age. They've made a, a deal or somewhere. <laughs> but all right, so so you've actually lived your fantasy. Yes, I've lived quite. Yeah, unbelievable. All right, so. First of all, Joel, thank you so much. Oh, my this God. This has been pleasure. great. Um, I knew that there was a lot of alignment to Batman, but I needed a, a Batman authority to really figure it out. And you got to know Joel a little bit. Um, listen, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, man. Appreciate it. This has been Joel Zaritsky, and you can go check out the links below. And, of course, David Zaritsky from the Bond Experience, and we will see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.